The major studies done on the dietary treatment of people with breast cancer or the prevention of breast cancer have been useless. They have basically taken and taught a diet, a reasonable, moderate, prudent diet that is a, still a very sickly version of the American diet to one group and left the other group on the regular old sickly American diet and they got minimal results. And so it's advertised that diet does nothing to prevent or to cure breast cancer. They never tested it. They don't have the guts, so to speak, to test it. What you really need to do is you need to take a diet where breast cancer is unknown, uh, like used to be in Asian countries. Virtually unknown. It's a starch-based diet with fruits and vegetables. You need to take that diet, the diet that I teach, and you need to take and put a group of women on that diet, and you need to take another group of women who either are intended to prevent breast cancer, already have breast cancer, leave them on the American diet and see what happens. To, uh, to most doctors, that's, uh, that's unreasonable. That's uh, too much to ask of a woman, to ask her to change to oatmeal and hash brown potatoes and bean burritos and minestrone soup. But what will women do to keep their breasts and to stay alive? Women will uh, check their breasts every day and worry about the results. Women will go to a doctor at least once a year and have that male doctor check her breasts. Women will have their breasts squeezed between mammogram steel jaws to prevent breast cancer. That's what women will do. And women will go so far as to have cuts in their breasts made called biopsies. They'll have big chunks of their breasts taken out. They'll have the whole breast amputated. They'll have the nose taken out of the, uh, the armpit on that side. They will have radiation to their skin and chest, which will increase the risk of dying of heart disease. They will take anti-estrogen drugs, and they will take chemotherapy that will make their hair throw out, th fall out and make them throw up for a year. But they won't eat bean soup. That's too much to ask. Cancer is divided into stages. First, there's what we call an initiation event, starting with genes. Cancer starts with genes. It might be genes we're born with, it might be genes that are actually changed by a chemical. So those genes become uh, capable of producing cancer cells as they divide into the future. I call that like a, can a seed that we're planting seeds. That's the first stage of cancer. It can happen very quickly upon consumption of some chemicals or whatever. Then the long stage goes from that point to the point where we actually see we have cancer. That may take years. And that's growing these seeds. It's promoting their growth. In fact, that stage is called promotion. And so the, the question of whether we do or don't get cancer, it turns out, is primarily related to not the amount of seeds we may plant or the amount of genes we may have that can give rise to cancer. It more relates to how we fertilize that, how we promote those cancer cells to grow over time. That's where nutrition comes into play. Nutrition comes into play back here too, but it's particularly prominent during this phase. And animal protein, animal protein as we start doing the research, we could experimentally we could turn on the growth of these cells. They go much more rapidly when they were fed animal protein.